change not so much that everyone was fighting for, but that was slowly developing out of the progress that society was making three years ago. Today it is very different. Today there is a huge amount of disappointment with Obama. Uh, from what I've spoken about to people I've spoken to here, here as well as in the United States. There is a pessimism because there does not seem to be an alternative today. Uh, something has, has happened. The, certainly the, uh, uh, the relative passivity of the end of the previous period was very much in evidence. And social movements were, were present. The, the right to the city is the movement that I'm most familiar with. It's an, by now an international movement. Uh, on the other hand, the Tea Party movement also is strong in the United States. And there are conservative governments uh, almost all over Europe. Uh, the social movements are strong. Something very significant has happened between 2008 and today. And uh, crisis is one word for it, but I think only superficially. I think it is part of a longer term uh, turning point. And what I would like to do is use these, uh, these three time points to develop an, an argument that uh, rests on some work of the French School and my father's, uh, a longer term grand explanation for what, what has happened in history. I want to start by laying out the assumptions uh, in general terms. I then want to give you that history. I want to show you some, I want to use some pictures and details about the Tea Party and the right to the city to illustrate the argument. And I want to end up very briefly with some strategy suggestions that were very much debated when I talked at the Club Voltaire, which um, I hope you will disagree with constructively also. OK, the assumptions on which I start are really quite classic, uh, at least in the Marxist literature, which is the background from which I come. Fundamental assumption. We live in, in class society, in a class society, and have for a long time. And that in particular, the Industrial Revolution has produced a particular constellation of classes with capital and proletariat at opposite ends, but a recognition that uh, that, that constellation has changed significantly in the post-war period, the period in which I grew up and uh, that clearly we are still in, the André Gors and Adieu for the caveat was, uh, was a relatively well accepted variation on the theme of class society. But it remains, I think, uh, throughout an underlying understanding that there are basic economic divisions in society reflected politically, reflected culturally, but in which there are people in dominant positions, a class that is a dominant class and a class or multiple classes that are exploited and that the two are linked together, that the prosperity at the top comes in significant part from the exploitation at the bottom. 
And I think there is general, a general acceptance of the argument that in the complex class structure we have today, that in the middle there is a wide range of alienated labor. Not only among those that are exploited, but also those that uh, do intellectual work, uh, including many in managerial uh, positions, technologically advanced positions. And uh, that alienation is a fairly constant concomitant of life in this class-structured society. I think it is uh, fairly well accepted that there are a variety of mechanisms of domination that are used by those in power in order to